Hello there. Thank you once again for joining me on the program, Your Doctor in COVID. I'm your host. I'm Dr. Mahendra Karpen. I'm Head of Medical Services and Cardiology at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. We are going to talk again about our COVID-19 pandemic, the way it's affecting us in Guyana, the way it's affecting the world, but also what can we do about managing this COVID-19 pandemic. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send a WhatsApp to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. As usual, I'm wearing my mask covering both my nose and my mouth. I will take it off using the straps around my ear. And we continue to talk about COVID-19. Since March of 2021, Guyana has been fortunate enough to secure a number of vaccines that we have been using in a very commendable vaccination drive put on by the Ministry of Health in Guyana. We have an extremely dedicated and committed team of healthcare professionals in the primary health sector in particular that have been focusing on the vaccination program across the country. And they have had tremendous success so far. Over 230,000 persons have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And over 100,000 persons have been fully vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine. That is at least two doses. The vaccines we have available in Guyana are three main ones. We have the Sinopharm from China, AstraZeneca from Oxford University, and we have the Sputnik V from Russia. Now we have had some questions, some comments about the certification and the WHO approval for these vaccines. And all of the vaccines that are in use around the world have to go through a process of trials and these occur in phases where several thousand persons were studied after receiving vaccines. There is a, quite a process for approval across the world, but many countries started using vaccines before approval from the WHO or other international bodies because every country has the ability in their own technical scientists to look at the data as it relates to safety and efficacy. The other important consideration when making these decisions is also the availability of vaccines. Pfizer and Moderna will not be available to Guyana in any significant quantities at least until 2022. And we were not prepared to allow Guyanese to die until that time. We were not prepared to allow Guyanese to die while waiting on vaccines that were bought up by other countries and the third world, like us, have had tremendous challenges in trying to source those vaccines and to get them to our people. So we took the decision to ensure that we take the vaccine that we have available to us right here, right now. So I want to spend some time to look at the Sputnik V vaccine, which was produced in Russia and has been in use around the world for in more than 74 countries as we speak today. The latest major country to have adopted this vaccine for use in its population is a country of India with over 1.3 billion people. And that's a remarkable fact for us to acknowledge that a country like India with all of its scientists and data experts have analyzed this data and have seen it fit to use it in India while we are awaiting the WHO approval for this vaccine. The Sputnik V vaccine was the first registered COVID-19 vaccine in many parts of the world, in the Middle East, etc. And it has been in use 
there for a number of months. It is a human adenovirus vector technology that has been used and it's developed in a very highly respected Russian research institute. The effectiveness has been shown to be over 90%, 91.6% against the symptomatic forms of COVID-19. This, vac this vaccine uses a viral vector where two different types of adenoviruses are injected with the COVID-19 viral particles and that complex is then injected into people. And this is why we have difference in the first dose and the second dose of the Sputnik vaccine. Because one adenovirus type is used for the first dose as the vector and then a second adenovirus type is used for the second dose. Right now in Guyana, we are a little bit behind in our procurement of the second dose. However, we have until three months to get the second dose after we've gotten the first dose. So even though we started out thinking and practicing three week intervals between first and second dose, we have now seen the data that it is quite fine to get the second dose up to three months after the first dose. This is a vaccine that is given in two doses and storage condition is quite simple where the vaccine can be stored in conditions of temperature between two to eight degrees Celsius. And when it is sold directly from the manufacturer, there is a one price and that price can be different when it's sold from distributors, etc. So we have two types of the adenovirus and anyone who has had a cold knows what it's like to be infected with an adenovirus because the common colds that we get are caused by adenoviruses. And so once you inactivate those viruses, they're very much able to then be used as vectors to transfer the material from the COVID-19 virus into the human body. So we take pieces of the COVID-19 virus, inject it into the adenovirus, and then that complex is then injected into people. The Sputnik V results have been published in a highly respected medical journal. And for anyone who has tried to publish medical research and medical works in journals, you would have to recognize that there's something called impact factor. And the impact factor essentially measures how serious or how important a particular journal is, from readership, trustworthiness, circulation, etc. The Lancet is right up there in the top five. And to get your work published in the Lancet means that it has to go through a process called peer review um, evaluation. And so in order to get the data published, there was absolutely significant scrutiny of the data for the Sputnik V. And we have seen that the efficacy has been confirmed to be 91.6%. It protects 100% against severe COVID-19. There were no serious adverse events. It was safe and there was no strong allergic reaction to the Sputnik V vaccine. It can be stored between two to eight degrees. And this, was, this data was derived from analyzing more than 19,000 persons who were vaccinated with the Sputnik V vaccine. It has been confirmed to have among the highest safety profile of the vaccines that are being used right now around the world. In terms of serious adverse events, there were no cases reported in the Sputnik vaccine. 
In the AstraZeneca, there's about 0 0.8 per 100,000 doses. Sinopharm, 0 0.9 per 100,000. And the Pfizer vaccine, about 2.5 per 100,000 doses that were given. And I want to talk a little bit about the serious side effect that we are seeing emerging now from the Pfizer vaccine. There is something called myocarditis. Myocarditis means inflammation of the heart muscle. And we have seen a number of cases of inflamed heart muscles in persons who have taken the Pfizer vaccine. It has seen more in those in the younger age group, children below the age of 18. And it presents itself mainly as chest pain, sometimes chest pain that is occurring at rest or when they lie down. And it is important to recognize that that is a potential side effect of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Many of our residents and citizens are able to travel overseas, especially in the US. They may be dual citizens or green card holders and are therefore eligible for these vaccines. So if persons taking the Pfizer vaccine develop chest pain, this is something to be uh, noted and to be looked at just in case these are the rare side effects of the Pfizer vaccine called myocarditis. Nevertheless, all of the vaccines have shown one thing, that once you get the vaccine, the number of positive cases and the number of severe cases start to dramatically decrease when compared to those persons who did not take the vaccine. And we see this effect most remarkable about two weeks after the persons would have become fully vaccinated. If you were to look at a graph that looked at the number of persons who got the disease and became severely ill, there's a clear separation between two to three weeks of persons who were vaccinated versus those who were not vaccinated. The number of countries right now using the Sputnik vaccine is 74 and that number is expected to continue to grow. The data is in front of the WHO, it's in front of the European Medical Association for review and there is no reason to suspect that they will not grant approval for this vaccine's use in the coming weeks. Guyana took a decision that we are able to analyze the safety data, the efficacy data, and also evaluate what we have available. And it was based on those criteria that we decided that this was going to be the vaccine or one of the vaccines we have available for our people. Now, in big countries like India, we tend to look at what they are doing and sometimes we follow very closely the pattern that they take. They, in India, the Sputnik V is now one of their approved vaccine and they have ordered over 100 million doses to be given to their citizens. Overall, there are some facts that we need to know about the Sputnik vaccine. It is about 80% overall efficacy against COVID-19. It has a 91.7% um, efficacy in people vaccinated. They have had viral or virus neutralizing antibodies about a month after receiving their doses. 96.9% .9 of people vaccinated had antigen-specific immunoglobulin antibodies 28 days after vaccination. And 100% of people vaccinated had cell immune response to the coronavirus spike protein. These are important things to note, and it's important to note that this is one of the vaccine that has 100% effectiveness in preventing persons 
from getting severe COVID. Again, the severe COVID is defined as being admitted to ICU, being put on a ventilator, or dying from COVID-19. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send a WhatsApp to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Thank you once again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.